Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 27th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic. So this topic is important from your international relations and even your science and technology. So international relations comes under your GS paper 2 and science and technology which comes under your GS paper 3. So this topic it is about Russia to leave international space station and it's going to build its own space station so here we have to know about so in which year russia it's going to leave this international space station and here we have to know about some facts regarding what is this international space station so these are some important dimensions that we are going to see so now let us try to see why it is in use so Russia will pull out of this international space station after 2024. So after 2024, here Russia will be pulled out of this ISS. And here Russia which is focusing on building of its own orbiting station. So the country's new space chief said on Tuesday. So as you all know that regarding this Russia-Ukraine crisis, there is increasing of tensions. And because of this western countries they impose sanctions on this russia due to this russia ukraine conflict so here russia it mainly going to pull pull out of this international space station after 2024 so if you see some more important details it mainly says that russia would fulfill its obligations to its partners before leaving it is going to fulfill its obligations and the decision which which is mainly said by russia is it is going to leave international space station after 2024 and the Russia, nasa and other international partners they hope to keep space station running until 2030 so under the until this 2030 so this international space station which is going to work and if you're talking about some facts regarding this international space station so it was launched in year 1988 so it includes russia us japan Canada and European Space Agency. Actually, this International Space Station, it is a, one of the most ambitious international collaborations in human history. So, this is very important. And this International Space Station, it is a modular space station and it is located in this LEO that is low earth orbit. And here this International Space Station which serves as a microgravity and space environment research laboratory in which scientific experiments are conducted in astrobiology astronomy meteorology physics and even other fields so in all these fields so there will be some scientific experiments they are conducted and this international space station circles earth roughly in 93 minutes and completing about 15.5 orbits per day so how many orbits this international space station do that is about 15.5 orbits and it will cover okay about 93 minutes okay so it will cover one round around the earth within this 93 minutes and this international space station it is the ninth space station to be inhabited by crews and as well as uh, other other people like later russian salute almas etc mid stations as well as skylab from us so there were other labs which are mainly cable for example we have this russian salute almas and as well as mir stations and even skylab from us so these are some important things that you need to remember regarding this topic and now let us try to see next topic is regarding ramsar sites so this topic is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and this topic will be important from both your prelims and mains so title says India adds 5 more Ramsar sites. So now let us try to see why it is in use. So India added 5 more to this Ramsar sites or wetlands of international importance. So now by adding this 50, uh, sorry 5 to this Ramsar site. So now we have about 54. So this is the thing which mainly said by Ministry of Environment. So if you see some details. So the details given in this article are, so those five wetlands are Karikli Bird Sanctuary and Palli Karnai Reserve Forest and Pichavaram Mangroves in Tamil Nadu and Sakya Sagar in Madhya Pradesh, Pala Wetlands in Mizoram. 
So these are newly added five wetlands to this Ramsar site. And next one here is India's Ramsar wetlands. They spread over 11,000 square kilometers, and it comprises about 10 percentage of total wetland area which is located in our country. Okay, that is across 18 states. So no other South Asian country has as many sites though this has much to do with Indian geographical breadth and tropical diversity. So no other country in the South Asia so they do not have these many Ramsar wetland sites. So we are talking about UK which has 175 and Mexico it has 142 and smaller countries than India they also having some of the Ramsar sites. So for example Bolivia which has about the area of 1,48,000 square kilometers under this Ramsar Convention protection. And if you are talking about if we want to designate any sites as a Ramsar site, so it need to it need to satisfy some criteria. Okay, it is not necessary just to invite external extra international funds, but even states and center they need to ensure that these tracts of land they are conserved and spared from this encroachment. So this is very important. And acquiring this label also helps which local which locals uh, tourism potential as well so whenever you are taking protection of this wetlands that will helpful to attract tourists that will leads to increasing of tourist potential as well until 1981 so india had about 41 ramsar wetland sites and now though past decade has seen as a sharpest rise we saw there is increasing of 13 designated new sites and if you are talking about some facts regarding this wetlands so what are the meaning of this wetland so what is the meaning here so we're talking about meaning okay according to environment ministry so this wetlands it is like an area of marsh it is an area of marsh or fen or peatland or water so either it may be we can say natural and as well as artificial it may be either natural or artificial or it may be permanent or temporary so with water that is static or flowing so water which is present in this area that might be static or flowing or fresh or salt that is a brackish water or not okay so either it may be like a slow moving water or fast moving water or fresh water or salt water or permanent or temporary which is natural or artificial this all comes under this under this wetlands okay and if you are talking about the depth so including the areas of marine water and in this marine water the depth which at the low tide should not exceed three six kilo six meters so this mainly also comes under this wetlands and even it does not include river channels paddy fields uh, okay but does not include uh, river channels paddy fields human made water bodies tanks specifically constructed for drinking water purpose and structure specifically constructed to aquaculture or salt production or recreation and irrigation purposes and if you're talking about this ramsar site it must meet at least one of nine criteria which defined by this Ramsar Convention of 1961. For example, so they should be vulnerable, they should be either endangered or critically endangered or what are the species that are present there, they are threatened. Okay, And if it regularly supports 20,000 or more water birds, it is an important source of fish, uh, source for the fishes, food for the fishes and as well as spawning grounds, nurseries and migration path and fish stocks they are dependent on this so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding freebies so can promises of irrational poll freebies be curbed supreme court asked government so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity point of view so during elections elections campaign will be done so i think you might come across this election campaigns so in this election campaigns, they will be saying that we are going to provide free laptops, free washing machines, etc. Right. So these mainly comes under this freebies. And now let us try to see this topic in a great detail. So if you are talking about context, that is why it is in news. The Supreme Court on July 26 asked the government, asked the central government to find out finance commission. Okay, to find out from finance commission if there is any way to curb this political party from promising this uh, irrational freebies. So here Supreme Court asked the central government to find any solution to curtail this freebies. Okay, so if you are talking about details, it mainly says that a bench which mainly led by Chief Justice of India, 
so which mainly flagged that there is some serious issue okay and asked for the means to control uh, the promise of free bees in entice workers so yes here we can see whenever there is elections so there will be the concept of these free bees okay so for this question which asked by supreme court so co here there is no clear cut answer from this additional solicitor general so now let us try to see the some important facts so free bees in indian politics okay so political parties they promise to offer free electricity for example free water supply for example monthly allowances pensions uh, okay and daily wage workers okay and even some gadgets like laptops mobile phones uh, etc in order to secure the votes of people so in order to secure the votes of people here political parties they will come up with this freebies during this election time and if you are talking about what are the arguments in favor regarding this freebies so first and the foremost thing here is it is essential for fulfilling expectations of people so in countries uh, like india so wait state have a certain level of development so it does not have proper well developed right so in that condition so whenever there is election so whenever these political parties are coming up with these freebies yes they will be having some impact on the part of the people as well and next one here is it also helps lesser developed states so especially the states that have comparatively low development low levels of development large scale of population which is mainly suffering poverty hunger so at that time we can go for this uh, freebies for sure and next one here is argument against this freebies so economic burden so whenever we are mainly going for this huge uh, like uh, for example uh, when we are going for this uh, freebies here that will also leads to increasing of uh, expenditure from this exchequer as well and it is against free and fair elections so we came with a promise of free and fair elections so we also made a promise of irrational free uh, free bees from this public funds um, before elections they unduly influences this voters okay so because of this that will leads to disturbing of a level playing field okay so this also this is one of the unethical practices that we can see and as well here is against equality principle so distribution of private goods or services which are not in public purpose which are not for this public purposes from public funds before election violates several articles of indian constitution even article 14 of indian constitution so whenever there is a free base means so people will be attracted and those people they will give the vote to that so and so political party so because of this we can see there will be no free and fair elections and it is also violated in the article 14 of indian constitution which talks about equality before law so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says a path to global connectivity so this article is very important from your gs paper on governance so this topic we are going to talk about 5g networks and how we are going to link with this leo low earth or low earth orbit satellite and what will be the advantages and what are the challenges that we need to we need to focus on so if you are talking about the context it mainly says that a terrestrial 5g mobile network it is mainly rolled out across the country yes we saw that there is a first phase of a 5g auction okay which mainly held so now the terrestrial 5g mobile network they are mainly being being rolled out across the country and now we can go for renewed interest in in, in integrating this non terrestrial networks as well so we can integrate this terrestrial network with the non terrestrial networks so those non terrestrial networks which mainly includes low earth orbit satellites okay so we need to connect with this low earth orbit satellites network they are called as sat nets as a complement to terrestrial networks so if you are talking about starlink and as well as one web they are mainly promoted by this elon musk and even bharat global respectively and they launched about 2500 and 600, 648 leo low earth orbits okay low earth orbit satellites so respectively and altitude about just 1200 kilometers so the important object to here is for promoting of global broadband connectivity okay and if you are talking about what are the primary three main uses whenever we are going for linking okay or integrating this low earth orbits with this 5g networks yes we have three important advantages so first one here is they are going to provide seamless transition between this terrestrial network and satnets okay so in case of any public emergency or public safety 
or disaster management and emergency situation so it may be useful and this one here is service which is un uh, ubiquitely uh, to provide 5g services in unserved and underserved areas so because of this we can go for bridging of digital divide and this one here is service capability that utilizes the unique capabilities of satnets okay they are we are having some unique capabilities of the satnets so those unique capabilities are multicasting multi broadcasting okay which is very much similar to that of content over the large geographical area and if you are talking about integration process satellites they need to be integrated with the terrestrial networks so that always been considered as two important independent ecosystem so as of now if you are talking about the satellites and if you are talking about the terrestrial networks they may be treated as two indiv individual or independent ecosystem so an extension or to this territory terrestrial networks satellites they were first mentioned in this deployment scenario of 5g okay so here we are going for this extension of this terrestrial uh, terrestrial network satellites so that was first time mentioned in the deployment of this 5g and this one here is this this was also provide this was also to provide 5g communication services for the areas where there is no proper terrestrial coverage as well okay so ter 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 in this uh, whenever we are going for integrating this so terrestrial coverage was not available okay and also to support the services that could be assessed more effectively through the satellite systems and this one here is so wireless communication through this uh, low earth orbit satellites so over a long distances is proven to be 1.47 okay 1.47 times faster than the communication over the same distance through this terrestrial optic fiber so what happens so when you are going for this integrating of this terrestrial uh, signals especially with this low earth orbit satellite so that is proved okay that is mainly proved that they are like 1.47 times faster than compared to that of uh, this communication that is present in this terrestrial optic fiber so these are the some important advantages so we need to keep this advantages into our mind and government need to take some essential steps so first of all so what are the issues need to be addressed so we need to address some issues like uh, satellite broadband methodology of allocation and high cost of consumer equipment and as well as placement and interconnections as well and if you're talking about some major challenges that are faced by this uh, low earth orbit satellites or satellites here is they do not have the terminal and they do not have proper access to the charges as well so we're talking about advantages yes we have number of advantages so we need to identify those advantages and we need to realize with those advantages and recently here government also came up with one policy that is national digital communication policy 2018 and this policy which mainly indicates that the number of areas including the development of ecosystem for local manufacturing of satellite communication system and even they mainly focused on promoting of private players for the strengthening of satellite communication structure in the country and next here if you move on so yes even government of india also came up with this nis nsil that is national space india Lim uh, limited so actually it is a public sector enterprise which mainly established in year 2019 so under the administrative control which comes under the department of uh, space so to reorient the space activities okay from a supply driven model to this demand driven model yes we need to focus on the supply uh, supply driven model towards this demand driven model and next one here is satellite communication policy of government that is going to provide uh, leo sat nets okay so to become the integral part of this communication uh, framework in the country so this is about this topic and next topic it is about power tariff revisions and state of discoms so this topic is very important from your gs paper 3 under economy point of view so if you see context it mainly says that on july 13th so tamil nadu generation and distribution company or corporation that is discom so which mainly filed a greater retail power tariff revision petition and in this context here tamil nadu electricity regulatory commission reporting that there is a high the power tariffs by 10 to 35 percentage and if you're talking about this mounting losses and outstanding losses 
they are leading to some consequent increasing of interest burden on this discoms so if talking about details it mainly says that according to this niti aayog's report 2021 august it mainly says that most power discoms in the country they incur losses every year and the total loss was estimated like rupees 90000 crore in the financial year 2021 So apart from this, here centers participation for annual or periodical revision of retail power tariff, and even states they have not complied. Okay, so the general approach to use this electricity as a tool for political agenda and even to make the promises is what happened regarding this electricity also. So here political uh, leaders they will be using it as a freebie. So they will say that we are going to provide a free electricity to households, free electricity through this agriculture and related activities. Okay, so this is also one important cause of concern. So what are the problems or issues faced by these discoms? So the discoms they suffer aggregate technical and as well as commercial losses. That is AT and C losses, and next one is technical loss. So due to the flow of power in the transmission and access distribution system, that will also leads to technical loss. And if you are talking about commercial new loss. so it is mainly due to theft of electricity yes so if there is any power line so they will be going for thefting of this electricity especially we can see in the rural areas so in past decades more than 50000 crore has been invested in the rural networks so if you are talking about actual investment which is which is very much less than compared to whatever the amount that we planned and moreover if you see here transformers and substations capacities in these areas they were designed to meet minimal demand of just 250 to 500 watts okay and in this rural areas people mainly using mobiles uh, tvs and as well as the refrigerators fans lights that's it and about 25% of electricity sales it is too highly subsidized and agriculture consumers they also receive this nat erratic and as well as poor quality of supply so about 25% of this electricity sales they are normally sub- subsidized so because of this here people they will be also not satisfied with this erratic power, power quality of supply so without functioning the meters and accurate energy accounting and loss monitoring it is one of the important challenge which is mainly faced by this discoms so these are the some important topics and now let us try to see the uh, this uh, small announcement so we in rathore says we came up with this mains answer writing course for one year so here we are going to give you weekly one live webinar okay regarding that topics and regarding the questions that you are giving and this is a one year detail plan we will be giving you weekly targets so based on that weekly targets daily one question will be given and if if you write that answer and if you are sending that answer to our mail id there will be evaluation and we provide detail feedback along with one to one mentorship as well so this course is highly beneficial so try to join this course and the new batch is going to start from this august 1st 2022 So now let us try to see other articles which are given in the newspapers. Title says Vikram Patel writes the need of the R Asha for elderly. So this article which is mainly talking about Asha for elderly and this topic is important from your GS paper to under governance point of view. And in this governance we have a special topic that is policies, programs and schemes of government. There we can add this article. So why it is in news? United Nations came up with this world's prospects population prospect report and this report which mainly highlights about continuing the growth of population in the coming decades is largely driven by increasing of life expectancy so whenever there is increasing of life expectancy yes what happens so there will be increasing of old age people so because of this we need to also come up with this asha for elderly so this is about context why it is in news So if you see some details it mainly says that United Nations World Population Aging Report so this report which mainly says that India's aging population that is above 60 and 6 above 60 and 60 above years they are mainly projected to increase to nearly 20 percentage that is increasing of old age population by 20 percentage and the year is 2050 and as of now we have 8 percentage of this elderly people and by 2050 the percentage of elderly people that will increased by 326 percentage and those who are above this 80 years will be like 700 percentage so because of this we can say there is a fast growing of this 
एज पॉपुलेशन और एज ग्रुप ओके ओल्डर पीपल इन इंडिया सो हियर दिस स्टडी विच मेन सजेस्ट दैट एट परसेंटेज ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ओवर सेवेंटी फाइव वॉज अफेक्टेड बाई डिमेंशिया डिमेंशिया मीन्स नथिंग बट मेमोरी लॉस एंड इट इज अ न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिजॉर्डर सो अल्जीमर्स एसोसिएशन सजेस्ट दैट सो कंट्री हैज ऑलरेडी होम टू फोर मिलियन पीपल विद दिस कंडीशन एंड डिमेंशिया इट इज अ कंडीशन एसोसिएट विद एजिंग एंड इट इज इट इज मेनली लीडिंग टू दिस प्रोग्रेसिव डी जनरेशन ऑफ ब्रेन सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस प्रोग्रेसिव डी जनरेशन ऑफ ब्रेन दैट विल हैव सम इम्पैक्ट ऑन द मेमरी सो हियर एक्चुअली दीज पीपल दे फेस वन इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम हियर इज दे डि नॉट गेट प्रॉपर सपोर्ट फ्रॉम देयर फैमिली देर इज लैक ऑफ फैमिली सपोर्ट सो ट्रांजेक्शन इन टू न्यूक्लियर फैमिली मीन्स दैट एन इंक्रीजिंग पोर्शन ऑफ द एल्डरली will live only with elderly spouse or alone so here what happened earlier we, we used to have a joint families or big families and now we came with a fashion that is a nuclear families so we are not going to stay with our in laws and as well as our parents so because of this what happened so now elderly people they are living alone or sometimes uh, wife and husband they will be living so if you are talking about what is solution for this elderly with chronic diseases so we need to focus on strengthening of this primary healthcare services and even we need to come up with the diverse health conditions home based nursing palliative care and as well as rehabilitation and even we can take the help of this ngos and civil societies for example asha deep so it mainly provides daily care okay day care center for the elderly members for of our community who are either neglected and they have no children or abandoned by their families so here this ngo which is doing a great job and it came up with this day care center so this care center for this elderly people and actually whenever the elderly people they are neglected or they are living alone or they are abandoned by the family so they will be coming here and it's one is community based care system for elders so asha program could be used for the building a community based workshop okay work force to support uh, diverse health and social care okay needs of elders so we can also come up with a community based system so in this system we can build a community based workforce and they are going to support this diverse health and as well as social care needs of elders and this one here is i want to give you the main questions so the question here is care for the elderly in country needs to be primarily adopt an approach with emphasizes which emphasizes on seeing them as assets in the indian growth rather than seeing them as a mere dependents to be cared for discuss so try to write answer for this question in the comment box and now let's try to say next topic is regarding swadesh darshan scheme so tourism ministry revamps its swadesh darshan scheme so it is mainly aiming for sustainable infrastructure so this topic is important from our gs paper to under governance point of view so if you see context it mainly says that so ministry of tourism mot rewarms this swadesh darshan scheme so here we are going to see about what are the details and some facts regarding this swadesh darshan scheme so if you are talking about key features of this revamped scheme so they are mainly focusing on sustainable and responsible tourism sustainable and responsible tourism so they are focusing on development of benchmark and standards so they are also focusing on promoting of domestic tourism domestic tourism mainly in tier 2 and as well as tier 3 cities and the state government will designate implementing agencies for the project as well and under this project 100% funds that will come from center that is center sector scheme so if we're talking about this swadesh darshan scheme tourism industry launched this swadesh darshan scheme in year 2014 and they mainly focused on development of theme based circuits and country which is mainly using 100 percentage of central funds and this csr corporate social responsibility funding under this scheme so funding of individual projects that will be varying from state to state so in some states we have a lot of amount lot of amount of this tourism sites but some states they won't so because of this here the funding of this individual projects will be vary from state to state and that funding will be finalized by a detailed project reports and this report prepared by program management consultant and if you're talking about state of tourism sector in india so in tourism india ranked 10th position in world travel and tourism council report in 
and here this report says that about 6.8 percentage of Indian uh, India's GDP so here we are getting from this sector and about 8 percentage of total employment that we are creating in this uh, in this in this tourism sector so India has 40 sites listed under this world heritage list okay and if you are talking about what are the steps taken by government so India recently came up with this draft national tourism policy and this policy which is focusing on green digital tourism and some important main points were industry status and tourism sector and we are also going to focus on green digital destination management skilling and tourism related support to this MSMEs so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding India Japan they conducted maritime partnership exercise in Andaman Sea so this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations so if you see context it mainly says that so the exercise which is between Japan's maritime self-defense force and Indian Navy okay Indian Navy and Japan's maritime self-defense forces they came up with this exercise in Andaman Sea so if you see some details it mainly says that so the important aim of this type of uh, exercise over the first one is to enhance interoperability to enhance communication and as a streamlining of relationship and the unique feature in this here is INS Sukanya which is named after notable women from Indian epics okay so offshore petrol vessel of this Indian Navy will be participating in it so INS Sukanya which is also participating in this so this is one of the unique feature and other exercises are present between India and Japan they were India Japan maritime exercise that is uh, called as GMEX and we have Malabar that is a combination of India US Japan and as well as Australia so the multi exercise mul maritime sorry here if you're talking about this maritime exercise so with other countries like India Thailand coordinated patrol and Komkan okay and next one is Samudra Shakti Singapore that is India maritime bilateral exercise that is Simbex so these are some of the exercises that are present okay that are present in our country and we are going for this interoperability sharing of communication with the other countries so these are some important articles that appear in our Hindu newspaper and even some other papers so these are in total the current FIs of today so here I want to make a small announcement so we came up with this mains answer writing practice you can take this course that will be absolutely beneficial and we also came up with this foundation course for UPSC CSC so this course is also very very beneficial so here in this course we are mainly discussing each and every topic with a detailed explanation and you can get conceptual clarity for sure okay and one more thing here is we can also provide you one-to-one -one mentorship if you are taking this one foundational course and if you are taking this one year foundational course you will be getting uh, sorry if you are taking this two years foundational course you are getting one year prelims test series and as well as one year mains answering course so by this you can have the con you can get confidence of clearing this UPS prelims and as well as means so if you want to go through these courses you can visit our website rathodsisacademy.com and there you can register with your email id and click on and click on course list you can see the wide ranges of courses there and if you want to take individual module like only geography history economy so you can take this individual courses also okay so now let us see the today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu pdf so date here is 27th july and this is delhi edition so first topic it is can promises of uh, irrational poll free bees be covered so this article is very important i already discussed this topic about free bees and what are the arguments in favor what are the arguments against okay so now let us try to see the next topic it is regarding spurious liquor claims 36 lives in dry gujarat so what happens so it is talking about spurious liquor so as many as about 36 people they died after consuming this spurious liquor in Gujarat so actually in that area prohibition of uh, liquor consumption is under ban so 40 people they are battling for life in the various hospitals so with several more and still critical condition so the toll is expected to rise now so we're talking about here in this spurious liquor they found methanol was present so police invoked the section 302 murder case and section 328 that is causing hurt by poison and section 120b that is criminal conspiracy of ipc okay so this is about this topic 
and if you move forward you can see here two articles that is spectrum auction bids worth 1.45 lakh crore placed on day one so here actually we discussed about the 5g article here so this spectrum auction for this 5g 5g uh, spectrum which mainly started and this is about the first day auction and second one is uh, russia to leave iss build own space station i discussed this topic and if you move forward here you can see one article that is delhi reports the cases of uh, monkey pox so man suspected to be having this monkey pox has been admitted in this delhi government run lok nayak jai prakash hospital and they mainly uh, undergone the test or uh, that is a blood sample test and the suspected has not connected with with uh, to any uh, confirmed case of this monkey pox virus and suspected cases he is in this 30s and with the travel history to the foreign country so it is one of the thing which mainly said by this uh, one source so you have to know about what are steps that can be taken to control this uh, monkey pox to be becoming as a pandemic so now let us move forward so in this state page there is nothing much article important and this page that is state page number 4 here you can see one important article that is rare flight rare flight of antarctic light mantled albatross okay so it is a one species of uh, bird which is mainly seen in water so there is a rare flight of this antarctic light mantled albatross to tamil nadu so here first time in rameshwaram so here in this gulf of mannar marine national park and it is present on this adams bridge or ram setu so it is it is very much unique for this uh, maritime or marine ecosystem so here the first time for the first time here asia has the first sighting of light mantled albatross it is a species which is native to antarctic seas was recorded here okay so this is a one important thing so the sighting here is first asian record of light mantled al albatross okay albatross from rameshwaram island tamil nadu india has been published okay so this is about uh, this topic and you have to know some uh, some important facts regarding this bird so actually this light mantle albatross with a bird pelagic habits so it mainly maintains circumpolar distribution in the southern ocean and breeds of the several sub antarctic islands as well okay so this is about this topic and it is listed as near threatened species by iucn and if you are moving forward in this states page number 5 there is much not nothing much important and here in this editorial page the most of the articles are political articles they are not at all important and here if you want you can go to this article regarding this west asia and in this opet page i discussed about this 5g networks and here there is one article regarding seeking to destroy india's civil society so here you can talk about fcr you can talk about prevention of money laundering act so these are some important topics uh, that you have to do some research that is about this fcra what is this uh, prevention of uh, money laundering act etc and if you move forward in this text and context i discussed about this power tariff and even i discussed about this discoms and next article it is regarding killing of activist in myanmar and its aftermath so on july 25th what happened in myanmar so myanmar junta executed four pro democracy activist due to the executed activities have been high have been identified to the jimmy who was 53 years old veteran okay so he he is like 53 years old veteran of uh, of this and uh, moment and this student uprising and they also gave some help to this co faisa zia and as well as uh, they mainly fa they mainly focused in this hip hop artist as well okay actually what happened on july 25th myanmar junta executed pro democracy activist and junta spokesman they called for the execution of lawful and said it was a justice it it it, it is it was a justice for the people so here the execution which mainly made and this execution which mainly condemned by the individual countries international organization etc and there was uh, also growing relentlessness within this junta which mainly for falling to this un uh, falling to establish control legitimacy and as was despite being in power since february 
so what happened so here even though uh, Myanmar junta military which is mainly controlling the country so there is going of rest there is still growing of restlessness that is mainly seen in the people and if you move over here you can see one article that is using technology to make better decisions so this article is also very important and if you want you can go through this ones and here in this page number 10 here this article says that two BSF border security force persons killed in anti-UN protest in Congo. So two border security forces persons they participate in this United Nations peacekeeping contingent and they and they uh, were killed okay they were killed in violent armored protest in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So it was on Monday that local police had uh, given a call for the protection against M uh, M O N U S Monosco. Okay, so it is a French acronym for United Nations Organization Stabilization uh, National Mission in the Democratic Republic Congo. So as a two B F F uh, B S F that is a border security force can uh, platoons platoons are deployed in this Beni and as well as Butembo. They were at high alert now. Okay, so two B S F plat platoons are also deployed. And actually here in this region two. BSF forces they had been uh, they had been killed and if you move forward here in this uh, page number 11 there is nothing much important and even in this page number 12 there is one article important that is Ramsar sites so I discussed that topic in great detail and if you move forward so here this one article that is European Union reduce gas used by 15 percentage over the threats of supply cuts so because of the supply cut of this natural gas to this uh, Europe, European Union and European Union said that they are going to cut use by 15 percentage and if you move forward in this economy page or business page IMF cuts outlook for global risk flags recession in recession risk so this article is very important so you can also go through this article once so these are some important articles that appear in our Hindu newspaper so I hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy if you have not subscribed and one more thing here is you can share this video to your friends so that they will be also get benefited. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.